Hey guys, it's the end of another beach day and it's just the sunset. It's a really cool sunset tonight. It's like a sliver. It's a really tiny little sliver. Um, down here is uh, Cardiff Reef again and then I'll spin it around here and all the way down. This is where we got married and this is um, this is called Tabletops down here because it's a big coral reef, but gosh, it's kind of sad. Josh and I are really sad because we are winding our trip down. This is probably, ah, this is probably one of our last sunsets. So it's been a little bit of a bummer. We've been, uh, we've been kind of just really sad all day, kind of moping around. But it's something that it's like, it kind of just brings me to like, how many times do we go, you know, through life and we either anticipate what the end is gonna be, so we either don't embark or don't go, or, you know, we already are kind of like, you know, we're just feeling sad, we're just all so close, you know? Josh is just really, really, really close with his mom, and I know that it's always, it's just it's always just a sad thing to have to say goodbye. For me, it's just saying goodbye to all my friends, and saying goodbye to the ocean, and saying goodbye to my best friend, Deals McSqueedles. It's just, it's a tough, it's a tough, um, it's a tough thing to do, but at the same time, it's like we've got, you know, a lot to look forward to. I just think this next year is going to bring about a lot of really cool opportunities in Tucson. So, um, looking forward to that. But this is just going to be, this is going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. Gosh, I mean the water's just so warm. It's just been such a beautiful day. Oh man, it's gonna be tough. Tough, tough, tough. Anyway, you guys, a uh, little message today that I wanna talk about is writing yourself a love letter. How many times in life, you know, when you were younger, you wrote love letters to your boyfriend at the time or you received love letters um, from a, a guy you were dating? Um, and I was thinking about that whole concept of just kind of like reconnection. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we wrote a love letter to ourselves? I mean, how would you even start it out? Does it feel weird to do that? Um, but I want you to just really try to, try to stretch yourself and try, try, it's a little ocean air, try um, to sit down and, you know, get a card and, um, and or like go to a dollar store and, and pick out kind of like a romantic card and write yourself a love note. Write yourself, you know, just a connection on how much you love yourself and how much you um, appreciate yourself and how much you, uh, you know, you are gonna really support yourself through this next year. So just, you know, just start thinking about what, what, what would be some cool things that you would say to yourself. And then put a stamp on it, stick it in the mail, and uh, in a couple of days you'll you'll receive it. Or when, when you receive your card, do yourself. Have a cup of tea, sit down, read your card, and just experience what that connection is like. Some people may not even be able to get the card. Some people may be able to start to write it, but they won't be able to send it. Some people will be able to send it, but then they won't be able to open it up. Some people will be able to open it up, but then they don't know what to do with it. For me, what I would have you do is put it on the refrigerator, put it on your uh, bathroom vanity mirror, put it somewhere where you will uh, be able to reconnect with yourself and reconnect with what those special uh, goals are and things are that you want to see within yourself. I was watching this interview of Mary J. Blige and it made me, first of all, so much respect to her because her vulnerability and her ability to talk about her marriage and um, the uh, breakdown of it uh, was really interesting. But basically what she said is she kind of lost herself in her marriage. She lost herself because she was so in love with her husband that she gave him total control as a manager, finances, everything, because she wanted him to feel equal to her. He didn't, she didn't want him to be intimidated by all of her success. And he always, he would chip away, chip away, chip away, chip away at her self-esteem and her self-confidence, even at her convinced that nobody wanted to hear her music. Anyway, when I listened to that, I thought to myself, how many times as women do we 
maybe maybe we're not with husbands that chip away at our self-esteem but maybe we are chipping away at our own self-esteem because we're putting all of our dreams and wishes and goals and aspirations into what they are doing and there's nothing wrong to be supportive and to be loving but I know for myself I've really put a lot into really um, you know just making sure my husband has food and his laundry is done you know just being a good wife um, but I haven't really been taking really good care of myself as well. I mean, I started to in this last year when I was really, when I started really getting into my, uh, the last couple of months into my YouTube channel again. So I just want us as, as women, as champions for women, that's what the station is all about, just being a champion for women. Let's just really encourage each other. Leave comments below and just let's encourage each other to really, really write love letters to ourselves, reconnect with ourselves, get facials, get a cute little outfit, get yourself special water, <laughs> get a manicure. <laughs> uh, um, but you know, just do things that reconnect you back to your so I was also listening to a uh, radio interview today. I do not know who the doctor was, but she was amazing. She was just talking about how she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, she went to the doc. She actually is a functional internal uh, medicine uh, doctor. And she's also got her PhD in psychology. I wish I knew her name. I, I don't, I, I, I can't remember. And it was a, I had the radio on for a really quick little blip blip time. Anyway. Basically, she was saying on there, when she went to the doctor to have them, to have her diagnosis made, they uh, gave her two different types of medications, and she took the medications home, and she basically, you know, she basically knew that if she went on those medications, she would be on those medications forever. So she wanted to kind of do, oh my gosh, do you see that? <gasps> oh, I didn't even know that was going to come out like that. Oh, I'm gonna have to flip the camera around it so you can see it. Oh, it's so pretty. So I'll kind of just keep talking you through this as I go. So basically, she'd been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and was given all these different medications, these two different main medications to go on, and she knew that if she continued to do uh, the medications that she was on, that... Hey, Bunny, go check the dog. Go check the window. Um... Go check the window. But I put them all the way down. So anyway, um, she she got off the medicate. She just she never actually went on the medications. She uh, she did some investigation, and basically what she found out is that her body was uh, when she studied more the process of rheumatoid arthritis, that her body was actually breaking down from. She called it uh, trauma with a capital T from when she was in childhood. And I think she was actually molested by her, um, oh, her vice principal, she said, in her school. Anyway, this, isn't that just horrible? What a horrible, horrible experience. Anyway, she was saying that um, through forgiveness of that, oh, there it goes. She was uh, saying that um, through her, through going, basically going through her past and forgiving herself, was she able to um, heal? And today, she does not only does she not have any effects of rheumatoid arthritis, she has more energy than she's ever had. But she said something in the interview that was really groundbreaking. So here's what she said in the interview. She said. What was amazing was that she found that she was uh, slowly killing herself and she asked herself, why am I slowly killing myself? And it was interesting, the reason why I bring this whole thing up and just kind of want to talk about it is, uh, you know, I found myself, when I heard her say that, I found myself thinking, oh my gosh, wow, when we as women gain weight, we gain, you know, a lot of weight. What is it about that that because you are slowly killing yourself when you when you're overweight You're increasing your chance for diabetes. You're increasing your chance for uh, uh, osteo uh, bone degradation osteoporosis um, 
you know, arthritis, all of these different things that can happen from inflammation, from an inflammatory state, heart attack, stroke, things like that. And I thought, to my, I mean, if you let it and you allow it to progress, and I thought to myself, wow, am I subconsciously literally trying to kill myself? And then I started thinking about the different traumas in my life. And I was like, well, I definitely have had, I've definitely had a, a lot of traumas with the capital T. So anyway, it's going to be interesting because the next couple of months kind of going into the fall, I really want to do some work on that. And I want to do some work with, with all of us on going back into our childhoods and adulthood life and just like, you know, the other thing she's and healing it to finish that. But the other thing she was talking about is just stress and trauma and how much stress we have during the day. And she was talking about the wild zebra is out in the wild and a lion is chasing it down. It's going to be uh, releasing norepinephrine, uh, cortisol, all these heightened responses. And she was saying that basically sometimes um, as human beings, if we are, um, if we're in that heightened stress state, you know, you don't have money, you don't have this, you don't have this, you don't have this, and you keep yourself up in that state, you're gonna be increasing uh, the results of cortisol and norepinephrine and just all of these, you know, all of these fight or flight hormones. So anyway, I'm going to really work on breathing. I'm gonna work on doing a lot of yoga. I'm gonna work on just really, how can I reduce the stress levels in my life? Because I don't wanna solely be killing myself. I wanna be empowered. I wanna be empowering women and I wanna just be alive and I wanna feel better. In one year from today, in one year from today, I wanna to be a totally different, different body. Because my body, my hips hurt, my back hurts. My energy uh, is uh, challenged at the end of the day, and I just really want, I want to just really, really majorly turn my life around. I feel like spiritually, um, with you guys and with my YouTube channel, that we've been able to do that spiritually, and we're starting to get there physically, because I'm starting to be able to like move better, so that's awesome, but I want to just keep that up, and I want to just like push like 100 billion million more times in that direction. So I hope you guys are with me in my journey. Thank you for enjoying. Ah! my last it's probably gonna be we might say tomorrow we may not I don't know but it might have been our last sunset so very sad but also I'm very anxious and excited about getting back and just you know seeing what God has to bring seeing seeing uh, where he wants to sh me to show up and um, be a leader so anyway you guys I love you so much remember to stand in your light to stand in your truth and above all else be a warrior in life. I love you guys. Bye. Mwah.